Kayla Pereira, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, a Florida man says he felt like he was on the wrong end of a firing squad. His name, Roy Middleton, and he's still trying to figure out why police started shooting when he was in his car, unarmed, in his own driveway. In a moment, we'll talk with Pensacola Sheriff David Morgan, whose officers were involved. But first, Nick Valencia will bring you up to date on the story, tell you everything you need to know. Good morning, Nick. Roy Middleton was shot by police. He's still in the hospital recovering. His family tells us that he's expected to be out soon. But for now, Middleton is just trying to make sense of what happened. All right, here. See the big slug right here? An unarmed man getting out of his own car, shot multiple times by police. See, he was in the car like this. And he said that when they told him that, he said he thought it was our neighbor next door playing with him because they usually do that. But he said when they shine and light, he said he went to put up his hand and turn around, and that's when the bullets started. Ciola Walker's 60-year-old son, Roy Middleton, came under fire while he stood in his Pensacola, Florida driveway, mistaken as a burglary suspect in the wee hours of the morning. I complied with the order, and they opened fire on me, and they didn't stop and guess until they ran out of ammunition. Middleton says he was just looking for a cigarette in his car at 2.30 in the morning. Escambia County deputies responding to a 911 call from a concerned neighbor say it was dark and Middleton refused to obey their commands. Then they say he lunged at them with a shiny object. Sheriff's deputies fired 15 shots at Middleton, two hitting him. He's now recovering in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The uh, whole hip bone is blown out and I have uh, metal rods in it. Critics to the shooting don't buy it and say deputies need to be better trained. I think what the community must understand is that we have a group of deputies that's trying to do their job, but it's a little difficult for them to do their job because they're not trained. Why would you shoot someone that's not shooting at you? Now, whether Middleton was complying or the deputies were acting appropriately, that will be determined in the coming weeks. The sheriff here has handed the, uh, the case, the investigation, over to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the state attorney. Uh, they'll have to determine if any laws were broken. Chris? All right, thanks, Nick. Sheriff David Morgan joins us now. Sheriff, thank you very much uh, for taking the opportunity to deal with these questions. You know uh, how important this situation is because it looks bad, Sheriff. You've got a 60-year-old man at his own house in his own driveway, and he winds up getting shot at 15 times by two officers. You say it was justifiable. How? Well, again, our officers, uh, Mr. Cuomo, they followed standard protocol, and again, you know, we're getting the Monday morning quarterbacking and the after actions, uh, you know, comments basically of neighbors who, who are getting their information from other neighbors and sometimes getting uh, second and third hand information from even family members. The officers responded to a 911 call, which was a vehicle theft in progress, mm -hmm. uh, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, again, you know, some of the statements vary uh, in the spontaneous utterances that Mr. Middleton made, of course, are changing now. But they responded again early in the morning. We had an eyewitness next door who was on the cell phone during the entire time. He only entered his, his house once the uh, gunshot started. Uh, he observed exactly what the deputies did. All of the witness statements match up with what the deputies' actions were. So right now we're comfortable from a training perspective that our officers, in fact, did follow standard protocols. Uh, I believe you're an attorney. You know, the standard that we use and we train to is a, a landmark mark U.S. Supreme Court case. It's, you know, Graham versus Connors, which is the reasonableness test of how officers react to these unknown situations. The officers, by the way, were illuminated by streetlights. And when we asked the witness, was he aware that they were deputies, he said yes, he could tell by the patches on their sleeves. Right. What we're leaving out of here, though, Sheriff, is what could this 60-year-old unarmed man have done that would make the officers feel they needed to shoot at him 15 times? He did not comply, is the bottom line. Uh, the witness statements are go as such. Uh, when they first directed the individual to exit the car, he first stuck one hand, his left hand, out the driver's window then retrieved his hand. Uh, attempt, it looked as though he was going into the console area of the car. Then he opened the door, put one leg and one arm outside the door, lunged back again inside the car as, as the deputies were telling him to, again, step out of the car, let us see your hands. And then when he got up out of the car, he made a lunging movement out of the car. And when he spun around, uh, his hands were not up. He raised one hand, which had a metallic object in it. And it was at that point that the officers uh, began to fire. Even if everything you're saying or that your officers are saying is true, 15 times at a 60-year-old unarmed man, why? 
Well, again, Chris, we didn't know that he was unarmed, number one. He had an object in his hand, which led the officers to believe that he had some sort of weapon. Uh, and that also is standard protocol. When an officer employs deadly force, your training tells you to continue to fire until the suspect is secured because you've made that decision at that point that your life or the life of someone else is in danger. And so that's not out of the ordinary. The officers involved were what? And yes. Go ahead. Yeah, Chris, I might also point out that just less than five days prior to that, you know, people are making comments about the officer's training. Uh, they had just completed, uh, uh, which is a routine thing in our training at the Escambia County Sheriff's Office, what's referred to as our active shooter program, which is an interactive program. It's computer driven where you role play and officers are trained to defuse situations and not allow it to escalate again to a shooting situation. And that was just five days prior to this case. But, Sheriff, doesn't something about this situation give you pause for concern when your officers wind up shooting at a guy 15 times? It's like the only thing that went in his favor is that your sheriffs were a bad shot, so they only hit him once with 15 rounds. Otherwise, it seems like uh, that's all he had going for him here, and you seem completely kind of unmoved by the circumstances. They're very troubling. Well, again, Chris, we're, we're always, I mean, I've, I've described this to a lot of folks as a tragedy. Anytime a, an officer has to employ the use of deadly force in any situation, it's a tragedy. And it's a tragedy anytime someone is hit uh, by any rounds. Uh, again, the number of rounds expended, no, that's, that's not out of the ordinary. I think it's only out of the ordinary of those folks who are not engaged uh, in law enforcement. This is all too common an occurrence. We live in a very violent society. In Escambia County, unfortunately, we have the third rate, uh, highest rate of incarceration out of 60 seven counties and we have the eighth highest crime rate uh, for a county that again is not the largest county in Florida so our officers are responding to very dangerous situations this was 2 30 in the morning right uh, again we had a subject who was who was not compliant uh, so, you know, again, I'm not really sure how the officers could have reacted differently in this situation. But again, well, we don't conduct the investigation. I got you. First of all, and that's a very strong move, you handling it over to the state authorities so that they can have an independent eye on it. But I got to yes. give you one more chance at this, um, Sheriff. People look at this situation, and the report was wrong. It was not a burglary. This is the man's house. He was unarmed. You say that your deputies say he didn't comply. Another witness says he did comply. He says he complied. So we don't know really what happened there, although it is a little unreasonable to assume a man would not comply while on his own property doing nothing wrong. But do you understand why it will give people such concerns about what happens when white police officers encounter black men down in your county? Well, again, and now we're injecting race into the situation, which, you know, compounds uh, the situation. And again, the eyewitness that you're referring to, the, we took a statement from mm -hmm. this gentleman. He was one of the neighbors of Mr. Middleton. His statement has changed. You know, we, we've got a sworn statement from this individual, and the statement that we received from him said that, you know, from his vantage point, he could hear the officers directing Mr. Middleton. Uh, he, you know, confirmed basically all the things that our officers said. And so now on camera, he's changing it. You know, he wasn't belligerent from what he could tell. He was complying. Mm -hmm. So again, we've got a variance there. You know, are we concerned? Well, again, Chris, I mean, that's a little bit of a ridiculous statement, if I may say so. Anytime a citizen is harmed, uh, you know, we're concerned. And in this case, Agord, when you inject race into it, I mean, it, you know, it's inflammatory. Well, I wanted to give you a chance to respond to it because it's not me who's introducing you to what people's concerns are about this situation. That's why I'm putting it out there. This is the way it sizes up to people. That's why I appreciate you coming on to explain it from your perspective. Hopefully, well, Chris, I, could I, could, could I yes. put this? Could I put this somewhat in balance? Sure. Uh, here's why I'm. Yeah. Here's why we're concerned about this as a community and as a nation. Approximately four months ago in Escambia County, uh, you know, there were two black males and a black female who bludgeoned a white female to death with a ball peen hammer and a crowbar. And there was no public outrage. There was no uprising in this. Approximately a month and a half ago, a black male shot a white male unarmed on Pensacola Beach, you know, in the face and in the chest. There was no public outcry to this. So again, now that law enforcement's involved in this, you know, I'm very concerned about mm -hmm. this from a race relations perspective as much as anything, because what it tells me is we haven't bridged the gap as much as, unfortunately, I thought that we had. Uh I think it's a great point to make, Sheriff. I appreciate making it out on our show, and I appreciate you taking the opportunity. Thanks for being with us today. Yes, sir. Kate? Coming up next on New Day.